Hey, what's up? Mushroom and white sauce pasta is one of the most delicious and comforting meals that I can think of. But if you're not careful, it can become a heavy gut bomb that tastes only like cream and not like mushrooms. So to drive the point home on the mushroom front, I'm gonna make some super quick, very flavorful mushroom broth. For that, I'll grab a saucepan and into it add 30 to 40 grams of dried mushrooms. I'm using shiitakes here, but dried porcinis also make a pretty intense broth. Then I'll top those mushrooms with 500 grams of water. Then I'll move this saucepan over to my stove and bring it up to a ripping boil. Once it's boiling, I'll turn the heat down to medium low and then gently simmer this for five to 10 minutes to make what is essentially mushroom tea. After 10 minutes, I'll kill the heat and then move this pot off to the side so that it can continue to steep and get more mushroomy until I need it in about 10 to 15 minutes. Next, let's sort out the mushrooms that we're actually gonna be eating. I've got three types here. The first of which is king trumpets. These have a mellow flavor like most farmed mushrooms do, but they have a really nice firm texture, way better than buttons. Next, I've got some enoki mushrooms here. Again, mellow overall flavor, but great texture. And visually, they look like a fairy tale version of a mushroom. And then lastly, I've got some oyster mushrooms here, which out of the three probably have the most flavor. I chose these varieties mainly because they look pretty, not because they're special in any way. Of course, standard issue baby bellas or shiitakes would work great here. Now to prep these enokis, I'll just cut off the stem end and then break up the cluster so that they fall into individual pieces. For the oyster, I'll cut them into thin strips that are about a quarter inch thick. Those are gonna integrate into the noodles a lot better than chunky square ones. And then for the king trumpets, I'll cut the stem and base apart. I'll cut the base into quarters, then turn 90 degrees and then slice them mm, pretty thin. Then I'll cut the cap into quarters and slice those thin as well. For this dish in total, you'll need 375 grams of whatever mushrooms you like sliced thin. Next, I'm gonna grab my largest nonstick pan and drop it on the stove over medium high heat. Of course, a big heavy bottom pot would also work to build this dish. Just know that you'll miss out on the tossing step at the end that enables that extra creamy, luxurious sauce building. Plus stirring in a pot like this tends to break down pasta a lot faster than tossing it in a saute pan. Speaking of pasta, I'm gonna drop a big pot of water on my stove and bring it up to a boil while I cook my mushroom sauce. Over on the other side of the stove, I've got this pan ripping hot, so I'm gonna add in a good long squeezer of olive oil, then three to four tablespoons of butter or about 30 grams worth. And once that's just about melted, I'll add in all 375 grams of my mushroom blend, then a strong pinch of salt or about five to six grams worth, then I'll jump in with my wooden spoon and give this a stir to combine. Despite this pan being quite hot, no caramelization or searing is gonna happen until we cook out the moisture in the mushrooms. Five to six minutes later, after some high heat sauteing and intermittent stirring, as you can see, we've gotten most of this mushroom's water cooked off and we've got a little caramelization going on. At this point, the mushroom is about halfway done. So next I'm gonna add in some aromatics. That's gonna be 50 grams of medium diced shallots, 20 grams of minced garlic, and two to three grams of chopped fresh thyme. Behind that, a strong pinch of salt right on top, and then I'll jump back in with a wooden spoon and stir everything to combine. From here, I'm gonna saute these mushrooms with the aromatics for another three to four minutes so that I can fully soften everything and get a decent amount of flavorful browning going on. On the other side of my stove, this water is up to a boil, so I'll add in two very generous grips of salt, then in goes eight ounces or 225 grams of a pasta shape called campanelle. Next, I'll set a nine minute timer to cook this until it's just about al dente, and then I'll come back and give this pasta a quick stir to make sure it's not stuck to itself or the bottom of the pot. If you haven't heard of campanelle before, let me tell you, it is a pleasurable pasta shape to eat. I first used it in my beef stroganoff video a few weeks ago. Link to that barn burner of a video in the description if you're interested. And yeah, I fell in love with this shape because it's springy, it holds creamy sauces like a freaking dream, and it holds on to chunky stuff inside of those folds really well. Now, I'm gonna give this pasta its proper nine minutes to cook while I quickly thank the sponsor of this video, Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a nutritional drink that combines nine health products in one that all support your gut and immune system and improves overall energy energy and focus. This stuff has a total of 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced nutrients. All the stuff that my body wants but is not getting from this pasta or this quesadilla or this cheese and meat sandwich. So I personally love it that AG1 gives me all the good stuff that my body needs in just one scoop mixed into water every morning. AG1's vitamins, minerals, and functional mushrooms, yes, there's mushrooms in there, all of those support your immunity which we can all use going into the new year. But the main thing that I've noticed since I started taking AG1 about 
two years ago is that it actually makes me feel like I have more energy throughout the day, which is huge. So to try this stuff, use the link in my description below and you'll get a free one year supply of vitamin D drops plus five free travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. In my opinion, AG1 is one of those products that's hyped, but for good reason. So give it a try. The link is in my description below. After another three minutes of sauteing, these mushrooms and aromatics are looking really nicely browned up. So I'll take just about half of my shiitake broth from earlier and deglaze this pan. That's going to loosen up any flavor that might have been gripping to the pan and also soften the mushrooms and shallots so that they can integrate with the soft pasta more completely. It also doesn't hurt that as this liquid reduces, it's going to constantly concentrate the amount of mushroom flavor in this dish by a significant margin. So from here, I'm going to cook this mushroom broth down until it's pretty much fully evaporated and the mushroom shallot combination is super tender. That should take about three to four minutes. And at that point, it should look golden brown, softened and kind of jammy like this. From there, I'll add in 250 grams of heavy cream. I'll bring that up to a simmer and then reduce it by half. Once I can move a spoon through this cream and it leaves a trail behind it, it's ready to rip. That should also pretty closely coincide with the nine minute timer on the pasta. So I'll lift that out, give it a taste and yep, just a nip past al dente. So from here, I'll drain this pasta off and not save the pasta water because, you know, it's going into a pan full of cream. No need for starchy liquid to keep the water and fat emulsified. Next, the pasta goes into the pan, then a few tossed tosses to get an idea of how wet the sauce is looking. And as you can see, it's looking a little dry and kind of sad. So I'm going to add in most of the rest of my mushroom broth or about 100 to 150 grams worth. From there, I'll come back and get that all stirred to combine. And once I've got this looking loose and saucy again like this, I'll kill the heat and then add in 50 to 60 grams of grated aged Parmesan. This is preferably self-grated because most brands of grated Parmesan have some sort of anti-caking agent that keeps it from melting into pasta sauces properly. Then I'll season this with a pinch of black pepper and then hit it with a gentle squeeze of lemon to bring some very subtle acidity to balance all this richness. Now to finish this, I'll give it a classic toss, toss, toss to get that parm gently melted into that cream. Again, do this off heat because nice aged Parmesan will easily curdle if it gets too hot. Now, one more look at the final texture here, and I still think that's a touch thin, so I'll add in a little bit more Parmesan, and then I'll flip it one more time to get it melted in. Okay, wow, that's looking really nice. But the last step is always to give it a taste for seasoning. That last 5% perfection usually lies with the salt level, and I think this needs a touch more. I'll stir that in, and there we go. Creamy but saucy looking. A hard to reach but very meaningful sweet spot. This dish is one of those that can be easily abused, you guys, when it's made without the proper attention to detail. Think soggy mushrooms drowning in an oily Alfredo sauce. In fact, that might be the default state of a dish like this. But if you cut and cook the mushrooms just right and don't abuse the power of heavy cream to make things rich and luxurious, you're going to find that perfect place of earthy, silky, savory, and cheesy. If you're a mushroom head like me, then you know this thing's going to rip pretty hard. And if you're still not convinced about mushrooms, I think maybe keep an open mind. The ones that you've had probably haven't been cooked like this. Anyways, I hope you guys try this one soon. Let me know down in the comments if you like or hate mushrooms and what mushrooms you plan on using. Let's eat this thing!